Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to play The Rocketeer Fate of the Future. This is a new game by Funko Games. It is a one to two player game that takes roughly 40 to 60 minutes to play, and is a competitive head to head game where players are battling between each other to try to get the most points into the game. You're going to do this by moving around, trying to gain control of different locations, gaining certain things, playing cards, gaining the plans so that you can gain final cards that are going to get you points in the game based on a number of different parameters, whether it's just straight up points or having certain locations or having extra tokens or having the plans and all kinds of other things. And the game is going to be played over a few rounds as the Zeppelin moves its way towards Los Angeles. Once it reaches Los Angeles, that'll trigger the last round where the players will play through and then at the end of that round, they'll total up all their points and the player that has the most is the winner. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to play starting with components, setup, player turns, and end game conditions and scoring. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and build to produce this content. If you want to stay on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new stuff. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you how to play. There are three different decks of cards that players are going to be interacting with throughout the game. The first deck I'm going to look at are the final cards, and these are the cards that players are going to be trying to collect throughout the game, which will grant them points at the end of the game, and the player that has the most will be the winner of the game. So each one of these cards will outline whether it is worth a certain number of points, or if it'll be worth points and other conditions that you must meet to get bonus points, or some will grant you points based on the resources you have remaining at the end of the game, or different things that you've achieved throughout the game based on if you're playing the heroes or villains. The second deck of cards are the current event cards, and each one of these is going to show the number of spaces the Zeppelin is going to move, whether it is 0, 1, or 2. Then you're going to have an event in the middle of the card that the players will carry out. And then finally in the bottom of the card is going to show the location on the board that the final token will be placed for the round. And the final deck of cards is going to be broken down into two decks, one for the hero player and one for the villain player. Each of these decks works exactly the same way, and each card in the deck in the upper left hand corner is going to show a number of icons, which is going to correspond to the characters it can be used for. Each card can be used in one of two different ways. On the left hand side is going to be a number of action icons that the player can perform during their turn, and these must be resolved from top down. Each one is optional, but if you choose to skip it, you cannot come back and perform that later on. Then each card is also going to have an ability, which is going to list the name of that ability and the effect of that ability, and some abilities are also going to have a cost in clout that must be paid before resolving the ability. If you do not have the clout to pay, then you cannot perform that ability. And then some cards will also have a little shield icon in the bottom corner. These can be used for defense, and the card must be discarded, and each card discarded will prevent one damage. I'll cover this more in combat. Next, I want to break down the game board itself. For this example, I'm only using half of the game board, and the game board is going to be broken down into six locations. Each location will have a name, and each location will offer a ward during the ward phase of the rounds. Some locations will be split, showing a ward for the hero or villain player, depending upon who controls that location. And I'll go into that more during that part. Then, each location is going to have a side for the heroes and villains, with each side having a space for characters to be placed, and will also list a reward when a character moves into that location. So for example, with the Bulldog Cafe, when a hero or villain moves into their side of the board, they will receive a grit token up to the maximum number of grits that particular character can hold. And again, I'll go into more detail about this later. All right, so we're ready to move into setup. So first off, place the main game board out in the middle of the table, and then go ahead and grab the Lexingburg tile, place that above the board, and place the Zeppelin on the starting location, which is Lakehurst. From there, then you can go ahead and place out all the rest of the tokens and the stuff that you're going to be using for this game. And you can also shuffle up the current event cards, place those out, and the final card deck. I'll go ahead and shuffle that up as well and place that out. You can place the final token next to the current events deck. And then from there, then you're gonna move into player setup. So before doing that, go ahead and have each player decide which side they're gonna play, and then they'll sit on that side. So the hero player will sit on the left side of the board, and the villain player will sit on the right side of the board. For player setup, each player will choose a side to play, whether it's the heroes or villains, and will gain the three character cards along with their miniatures, and you'll also place out their tokens on top of their symbol on their board. 
These are double-sided tokens and will signify when that character has taken their turn. Then each player will also receive a reference card and their deck of cards. Then for the hero player, you're going to receive the Rocketeer token and you're going to place that on the bottom slot of his card. And you're also going to receive the plan three plans cards. You're going to go ahead and secretly deploy these underneath each character with two of them being the fake plans and one actually being the Rocketeer plans. So let's go ahead and do this. And then finally, you're going to draw seven cards into your hand. On the villain player side, you do the same thing, except for you're also going to gain six soldier tokens that will be placed off to the side. As you recruit these, they'll be placed onto Sinclair's board, and then they can be deployed. Once you deploy them, and I'll go over this more later, you're going to also flip over Eddie's card, and this is going to give you the rules of how to use soldiers, and this will activate them for the rest of the game. From there, then, the villain player can also draw seven cards into his hand. Next, you're going to place the characters in their starting locations. So Jenny is going to be down in the Bulldog Cafe, and PV and Cliff will start in the 1635 Palm Street Terrace. On the villain player side, we're going to have Sinclair and Luther in the Sinclair Mansion, and then Eddie is going to be in the South Sea Club. Then you can place the upper hand token in the Bulldog Cafe in the middle of that location. The one other important thing that I forgot is that each one of your characters will start the game with one grit token, which in the rest of the video I did mess up on, so I do apologize for that. But each of the characters will start with one grit token on their board. The Rocketeer is played over a set number of rounds. This will consist of either four to six rounds, and this is going to be based on how the Zeppelin moves. Each round is going to consist of four steps that are going to be done in order, and these steps are to reveal and resolve a current event card, then you'll move into player turns where players are going to alternate taking turns activating one of their characters. Once all the characters have been activated, the players will move into a reward step where they will gain rewards based on different conditions that they've been able to meet. And then finally, the fourth step in the round is getting ready for the next round. This is going to continue until the Zeppelin moves on to Los Angeles. During that point, the players will play through the first three steps of that round, and then the game will end and the players will total up all of their final points. Whichever player has the most points at that point will be the winner of the game. Alright, so moving into the game, the very first step in each round is going to be revealing and resolving a current events card, so let's go ahead and handle that. So each one of these cards, as you can see, is broken down into three different parts. The top part is going to show a number of Zeppelin icons, and for each Zeppelin icon, it is going to, you're going to move the Zeppelin forward one space on the track. So we only have one icon, so we'll move the, four, the Zeppelin forward one space. In the middle of the card is the event that we have to resolve. So this one is going to be that the man flies without plane. The hero player may place Cliff at any location. If Cliff is knocked down, he can stand up. So that player is going to choose to place Cliff down here in the Chapel Airfield. Finally, at the bottom of the card, it's going to show where to place the final token for the round. And then with this one, the villain player gets to choose. So that player is going to go ahead and drop that in the Sinclair Mansion. This will be discarded at this point, and then we're ready to move into the second step of the round. The second step in the round is taking character turns. This is always going to start with the player that currently has the plans. So at the beginning of the game, the hero player will always start with the plans. So that player is going to start this step. During the player's turn, they're going to choose one of their characters that has not activated yet, which means that their token is still face up. Once they've selected a character they wish to activate, so let's go ahead and say with our player, our hero player, they're going to choose to activate Jenny first. So they're going to flip her token over to signify that she has been activated. You can never activate a character that has already been activated previously in this step. From there, then the player is going to look at their hand of cards and choose a card that they want to play for the ability or action. So as you can see on my cards here, I can only play the cards that have the square icon on them, which is going to be for Jenny. I can play as many or as few of the cards that I want to out of this, but I, ha I and I do not have to play any cards if I don't want to. I can just simply skip over her and end the, round, the step here and pass it over to the villain player. So I think the first card I'm going to go ahead and play with her is the Smashing Success card. So with this one, each time you play a card, you can choose to use the card for its ability, if you can pay the, the cost in clout, if it has one, 
or you can use the card for its action icons, but you cannot do both. So I'm gonna use the card for its action icons, and for this, I'm gonna take you through each one of the different icons that are gonna show up on these cards. So before resolving the rest of this card, let's go ahead and move into that, and I'll show you what all these different icons do. The first icon we're gonna look at is the move icon, and this is going to have a number in the center of the icon, that is gonna show you the number of spaces you can move. Now each character can only move on their side of the board, and when they move, they get, must move to a new location. So if you have a icon that lists two movements in there, you cannot choose to move your character to a location and then move back to the same location your character started in. You must move to a new location. And once you've completed your movement to that new location, then you'll gain the reward that is listed on that location. And there are three different possible rewards. Three of the locations are going to have where you'll gain one clout token and add it to your supply. This can be used by any character during their turn. The other, the next icon you'll find is a grit icon, and each character can only hold two of these icons, except for Luther, who can hold three. The final icon is the plus one card, where you're going to get to draw a new card from your deck and add it to your hand immediately. And this is going to be resolved each time your character moves. The one exception to this is the Rocketeer, as he is going to work a little bit differently. Whenever he plays a card to use a movement icon, instead of using the value in the icon, he's going to instead use his Rocket Pack. And depending upon where the token is, will be the number of spaces he can move up to when he moves. So initially he can only move one space, but as he works his Rocket up, he can move all the way up to four spaces when he reaches the top. And he will also only gain the reward in the place that he lands in as normal, not the spaces he moves through. A cloud icon will allow you to gain a cloud from the general supply and place it on your side's shared supply. A grit icon will allow you to gain a grit token from the general supply and place it on your character's card in one of the two slots that it can hold. Most characters can only hold two grit, so if you already have two grit, you will simply not gain another grit token. The one exception to this is Luther, who can hold three grit tokens. Now the other way cards can be used is for their ability. Each card on the right hand side is going to list an ability that you can use that card for. Now you cannot use a card for both its ability and its action icon, so you must choose which way you want to use the card. Some abilities are also going to have a cost and clout that you must pay in order to use that ability. If you don't have enough clout, then you cannot use that card for its ability. So with each one of these, these are going to have potentially some different icons on them, such as the final token symbol, which means that you get to draw a final card and add it to your side. Now you do want to keep those hidden from other players or the other side so that they don't know what you have as those are going to give you points into the, the game. Then there's also going to be on the hero side, you're going to have the rocket. So anytime you have a rocket icon, you get to move your rocket one space up on your rocketeer's gauge. You're also going to have the card plus one card draw on some of your cards, which again will allow you to draw a card from your deck and add it to your hand that you can use immediately as long as it has the character icon on it of the character you're currently using. Again, you some of these cards will also have other instructions which you'll simply follow the directions on that particular ability when you choose to activate it. And once you are done with a card, you're simply going to discard it to the discard pile. If a character starts their turn knockdown, then the first card that that character plays with their icon on it will stand that character back up. They will not get to carry out any of the actions on that card from the left or right side, and that card will be discarded as normal. From that point on, then the character can take their turn as normal playing any other cards that they want to. The next icon we're going to look at is the Tussle icon. As you can see here, this icon also has a number in the middle of it, which is the strength of that Tussle, which is basically a fight with an enemy character that is at your location in hopes of either knocking that enemy character down, or if that side has the plans, hopefully revealing and collecting the good plans for that side or the real plans. So let's look at an example of this. Let's go ahead and say that Jenny moves to this location. She gains her one clout token for the reward for moving in there. And then she plays a Tussle 2. So this one is, there's two enemy characters in this location, so she must choose her target. So she's going to go after Luther. From there, she can choose to spend Grit Tokens, and for each Grit Token she spends, she'll get to increase her Tussle by one value. Now, there are going to be some abilities that you will not be able to spend Grit to increase. Jenny does not currently have any Grit, so she cannot spend that. So she is going to stay with her Tussle 2 against Luther. At this point, it'll move over to the enemy player to play cards from their hand that have the shield icon. So if we look at our 
characters over here, they have three shield cards currently. In order to be able to play a shield card, you must also have the character's icon in the upper left hand corner. So out of the three shield icon cards that we have, the, each one is specific to one of the characters. So this is the only card we could play as this one has the shield icon at the bottom and Luther's symbol on the top left. Each card you play with the shield blocks one strength of tussle. From there, once you are done playing any shield cards you have, then your character must discard grit for any remaining tussle that is dealt to them. So currently we have tussle two, so if we use this card, we'd have one coming back, and currently Luther has no grit, so if you are out of grit and you have tussle remaining, your character is going to be knocked down. So there's no point in us playing the card, as there's nothing we can do to keep Luther up, so we're going to simply place his car character on its back side. From there, if that character, if that side had plans, then you would reveal the plan that is underneath that character. If it is a plan that is the false plan that is simply left face up, if it is the real plans, then the player that this side will collect all of the plan cards and hide them. And I'm going to go into more detail about that a little bit later. So now let's put this all together and show you this activation. So with Jenny, she again is going to play cards from her hand. So let's see what we have here. So let's go ahead and start off with, I think we'll play this one here. So this is going to be Smashing Success. I'm going to use it for its action icons. This one will allow me to move up to two spaces. And again, each one of the icons I can do, it has to be resolved from top down. If I choose not to perform a icon's action, then I can skip over it, but I cannot go back and perform that later on. So with this card here, I could not gain the clout first and then go back and make my two movements. So resolving this one, first I'm going to move two spaces, so one, two, I can move. I could have moved shorter if I wanted to as well, but I don't have to, and then I will gain the reward of that location, so I'll gain a clout, and then the second part of that is to gain another clout. From there I will discard that card, and then I can keep going if I want to, or I could stop there. I'm going to go ahead and try this one here. This is a little luck. So this one I'm going to spend for the action on the card. So I have to spend a clout to do so. And then with this one, it says to discard the top card of your deck. If it shows a square, then you gain the rewards that are listed on this card. So do we get lucky? No, it is not a square. So we uh, have unfortunately not had luck with that card. Then I do have another card that I could play. So do I want to do that? I think I will. I'm going to go ahead and play this one here. Again, I'm going to play it for its ability. So this one says that I can move to any location and take the, lo the action on that location. So I'm going to go ahead and move her to this location here. I will get to gain a card. And that will finish off that card there. And then finally, I am going to... I think I'm going to hold off there. I don't think I'm going to do anything else at the moment. So that will end Jenny's turn, and at this point, then it'll move over to the other player to choose one of his characters to take his turn. The one important thing I want to cover on the villain player's side is the secret army. They are going to have a number of cards in their deck that will allow them to recruit soldiers. So each one of the secret army cards, when played for its named ability, will let you recruit one soldier by taking one from the supply and adding it to Sinclair's card. These cards are also going to let you discard three clout to do an ambush. Now, you do not have to ambush throughout the entire game if you don't want to, but the first time you choose to ambush, you are going to remove Eddie's miniature from the board. You're also going to flip his tile over to the back side, which is the secret army side. You'll place the token back on there with whatever side was face up before you flipped it over. And then you're going to place any soldier tokens out that were on Sinclair's board anywhere on the board at any locations you want to. Now, each soldier can only occupy one location at a time, so each location can only have one soldier. So let's go ahead and say that I place one there, and then if I had additional soldiers, I can place them on any of the other locations that I want to. So from this point on, any time I choose to activate the secret army, they're going to use the round symbol, and they can never use any named abilities. They can only use the action icons on this, the left side of the card. When I choose to use a card, I must select one soldier at a location and carry out all the actions on that card or any ones that I want to. I cannot split the actions between multiple soldiers. 
Now, once I've completed the card's actions and carried out whatever ones I want to, I can choose to spend another card just like normal and choose a different soldier to activate. So I can activate multiple soldiers during that turn, but I cannot activate multiple soldiers using the icons on one card. The other important thing is that soldiers cannot have plans. So if the evil player or the villain player has the plans, the soldiers are always going to have a fake plans with their the fake side up. So let's go ahead and look at an example of this. Let's go ahead and say that the villain player was able to steal the plans, so they have to have a false plans underneath them face up, and then the other two players will have to choose who is going to take the real plans. A soldier can never be knocked out if a soldier is eliminated by, and the soldiers do not gain gr uh, grit. So if a soldier is eliminated, they're simply added back to Sinclair's board. They're never added back to the supply. And then when Sinclair ambushes again, he can bring them back out. Soldiers will count as one for determining rewards, and I'll cover that in a minute. And soldiers do not get rewards for moving to different locations as well. They will never claim location rewards for moving. So before moving on to the next step, I want to take you through one more player activation on the villain player's side to explain a couple more things. So with this one, Luther is the last player to go as he, is, he has the last activation. So we're going to flip that over and then he's going to take his actions. So I'm going to play this one first. This is going to let me move one location and I get to draw a new card. And then I also gain a clout token. And I'll take care of that. And then I am going to, I'll play this one as well. This one is going to, again, I'll carry out the action icons on the side. It's going to let me move one. I gain a grit token. And I also get to tussle for two against the PV over there. So with that, I'm going to do two. I'm not going to discard any grit at this point. So then it's going to move over to the hero side. If they have any shield icons, which they currently don't, so then PV is going to have to discard one grit per tussle that is coming at him. So he's got two coming at him. He's only got one, so he must discard the one. And then he can, he doesn't have enough to block the second point coming at him. So he is going to be knocked down. He also has one of the plans cards, so he must flip that over. Oh no, it happens to be the real plans. So when this happens, then this character, the, the enemy is going to take the plans cards and then they are going to secretly deploy those. They can be given to other players, even players that are knocked down. But if that player is knocked down, then it's easier to take it from them as they cannot use grit or defense cards to stop any tussles that are at them. So then let's go ahead and do this. All right, then this is going to be discarded. And I think at this point, oh, I think I'll play a secret army card. So this one's going to let me add a soldier. I'm not going to ambush at this point because I don't have enough clout to do so. So that'll be discarded. And I think I'm going to hold on to this last card for the round. So I'm going to keep that over my area. At this point, all the characters have gone. So then we're going to move into the third step. Now that all the players have gone ready to move into the third step of the game, which is the rewards phase. During this phase, you're going to start off by giving the a final card to the player that has the plans currently. So our villains have the plans, so they're going to gain a final card that will be added to their area. From there, then you're going to start at the top of the board and work your way down to each location. At each location, you're going to determine who has control of that location, if anybody does. Each location, you're going to see how many figures that are at that location from each side that are standing up. If a figure is knocked down, it does not count towards determining if that you have control of that location. So at the top here with the observatory, the v villains have control as they have one character there that is standing up and the heroes have no characters there. If there is a tie, then neither faction will get the reward that is listed in the center of the, the location. With the observatory, you're going to gain the option to look at the plans of the other player if they have the plans, or if you have the plans, you can hide the plans, which means that you can rearrange them however you want, or if you have any cards that are face up, then you can flip them back face down and then rearrange the plans again. So at that point, our observatory, or we can do that on the villain player's side. Next, with the South Seas Club, if a location, if we control this location, that side would receive three clout. Neither player has any characters there. Over to the Sinclair Mansion. This one is dependent upon which side controls it, which will get rewards. So first off, 
for control are the villain players have control. They are going to receive one soldier or be able to recruit one soldier. Next, if they have the plans, which they do, they will get to recruit a second soldier. They also control the location that has the final token, so they're going to gain a card for that as well. Moving down to the Palm Terrace, our good players have that, so they are going to each receive a grit for the characters that are standing up that are even that that aren't at that location. So both Jenny and Cliff will receive a grit. Now, if you're already at your maximum grit, you will not gain any additional grit for this. Moving down, we have the Bulldog Cafe. With this one, both factions have a character there, but on the hero side, PV is down right now. He's been knocked out, so he does not count for this. So Luther is standing up, so the villains control this location as well. They'll gain the upper hand token, and when they draw their cards during the next step, they are going to get one additional card for that. Soldiers are also going to count for control of location. So we, if we had a soldier here as well, that would count for two. And so we would definitely have control there as well. Finally, on the chapel, chapel airfield, this one, again, is going to be dependent upon which side has it. On the hero side, we are going to gain a rocket. And again, if we had the plans, we would have gained a second rocket. So we'd be able to move it up another time. On the villain side, if they control this location, they would gain a clout and a second clout if they have the plans. Once you're done with this, then you're ready to move on to the final step of the round. And the final step in the round is preparing for the next round. The first thing you're going to do is each player is going to flip over their tokens to show that they are active again. Then the players can choose to discard any cards they want to from their hands. And then finally, they're going to draw back up to seven cards into their hands. If a player has the upper hand token, they'll get to draw an additional card. And if a player's deck is out, or if they run out of cards during drawing, then they will take the discard pile, shuffle it back up, and create a new draw pile. From this point, then you're ready to move into the next round, where you're going to go ahead and start with the first phase of that round. Now, the one exception to this is if the Zeppelin is on Los Angeles. If that is the case, then you will not resolve prepare for the next round. Instead, you are going to flip over all your final cards and determine who is a winner by totaling up all the points on those cards. So let's go ahead and handle this real quick and we'll go ahead and give a couple more cards to, let's give four to the good guys and we'll give five to the bad guys as they were doing really well this game. So first off, let's go ahead and resolve the good guys cards. So we'll see what they get. So first off, they have two points, and they have two additional points if you control the Bulldog Cafe. They do not, so they'll have two there. They get two points, and they would have had two additional points if they controlled the plans. They do not as well. They get three points and three points, so they have a total of ten points. Moving over to the villain player, they get three points. They get two points, and they also get two points if they have the upper hand token, so now they're at seven. There's ten they get two points, and if they control the South Seas Club, they get two more, which they didn't. And then they get one point for every two clouds. So they had one there, so there are two, so they'll get one point. So they have a total of 10, 12, 13 points. So the bad guys or the villains have won this game. Now, if there happens to be a tie, it'll be the player that has the most final cards that'll be the winner. If there's still a tie, then it is the player that controls the plans that will be the winner of the game. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.